Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Sarah and in this video today I am going to be making the Little Mermaid dress for my youngest daughter for Halloween. So this is the reference image that I printed out and the goal is to use materials that I already have um, but it might get a little crazy because let me well let me show you this fabric right here this is what she wants to use. So, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it could turn out great. It, it could look a little wild. I did pick up a pattern from Joann's to, I didn't feel like draping this one, to just help me with um, the dress. And this is the pattern I picked up. Simplicity uh, S9168. The idea here is to sort of um, edit the neckline to be a little bit lower. And this pattern calls for non-stretch fabrics. And this fabric is two-way stretch. If you don't know what two-way stretch means, it means that it stretches one way, see that? But it doesn't stretch the other, no stretch. Four-way st four stretch would be that it stretches both ways. So I'm going to have to size down or um, what I'm actually probably going to do, and I will show you guys this, is I will pull out the pattern, lay it down on my table, and probably go down one size and measure sort of this area, chest area, and maybe the waist of the pattern to see how much it compares to my daughter's measurements and then I will size down as much as necessary according to the stretch percentage of the fabric I will be using. So she wants the fabric, she wants it as the main piece. So I'm just gonna make it, that's a pretty simple task, make it, see what it looks like and then we'll go from there with the overlay. I do have fabric this that could be the overlay but it's a little wild and it's sequence on top of sequence so that's what I'm saying it could be a little too much a little crazy I might just need to find something that's completely sheer as the overlay as this part right here completely sheer maybe we can bling it up but she's also gonna need sleeves and I'm, I don't wanna use that overlay for the sleeves, it's kind of itchy. So uh, we're, we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna make it work. I always think about Tim Gunn on Project One, right? Make it work, make it work. So we're gonna make it work and you guys are gonna come along with me. So let's go. All right, let's, let's first talk about some things when it comes to buying patterns from a pattern company. One thing you need to know is you need to always check the size. And um, I did not do that <laughs> because this is size seven to 14 and she is five. So <sighs> I'm going to have to edit the pattern. I know that you're supposed to look at the size because they don't have all sizes in one thing, and I swore I did, but apparently I didn't. But we will make it work. So, look at the size. Make sure you're getting the right one, okay? So when you flip it over, it's going to tell you the fabrics that you need. So, cotton, cotton blends, taffeta, satin, polished cotton, more, I believe, and metallics. So this fabrics are for the main dress, this area here and here. And then it tells you the contrast for options A and B. So here's option A and here's option B. So the contrasting fabric is going to be this overlay fabric here. You can use shears, metallics, all that good stuff. Then you'll have notions. So you'll need thread. You're gonna need a 16 inch zipper for sizes three to six. Well, I didn't buy that one and one 22 inch zipper for sizes seven to 14. Now, because I am doing this with a knit that has stretch, I will not be using a zipper. 
That's also something I need to keep in mind when creating a new pattern because there is not going to be a cut up the back for the zipper like there is here. So I'm just gonna cut one piece. Um, I can cut the back on the fold, I can cut the front on the fold, and I can sew down the side. I mean, it's gonna be fairly simple. I screwed myself by getting a size too big. So I am automatically going to have to take some inches off of this. Luckily, these are one piece or, you know, it's not a PDF where you have to tape the pieces together. So I'll lay out the piece that is hopefully, um, well, it looks like they're separates and, but I can make them one. We're going to make it, we're going to, we're going to do it. I'm not going to say we're going to make it work because I keep saying that. Okay. But then it has all the notions, all the things you need to buy and it'll list the main ones there, and then if you're gonna do option B, this is what you need. If you're gonna do, and then B, C, this is what you need. Option C also needs this, so there's just additional items needed. See, here are the sizes. So this goes from size three to 14, but I got the seven to 14 one. So then you have um, fabric yardage that you need. You have the lining, so this does come with the lining. Um, right here it says the lining options, all cottons. So there's your, how much you need per size. The contrasting color for the overskirt and the bows. So this is option A. So if you're making option A, this will apply to you. Option B, that will apply to you. C, and then it breaks it down like that. When I first did a pattern, it was awful. These are very hard to understand if you've never done them before, but hopefully that clears up a little bit. I'm still not a, uh, a professional when it comes to these. I do work with a lot of PDF patterns that you order online. Um, and the designers of those patterns are m much more detailed. So it's a lot more helpful. So we're gonna get this baby opened and see what we're working with, how many pieces. And I just wanna make the bodice and the skirt off of this pattern. So this has a lot of pieces. This has sleeves for the ela or, or elastic guide for the sleeves, um, the collar. I don't need any of this. So instead of you guys watching me go through all this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the smallest size. So that would be seven of all the pieces I need. So this is the bodice front for, a for C. This is the bodice front for A and B. We are going to be making B, but we're going to modify the neckline. So I just need to cut out all the pieces for option B. So, all right, so I have all the pieces cut out. I just want to note a few things. I did keep the sleeve for option B, which is right here, because we are gonna do a puff sleeve on ours with another piece to it. So this will help me to accomplish that. I have the bodice pieces, so bodice, let me move this out of the way so you guys can see. Bodice front and bodice back, which will connect like this. Now it has darts because it is a non-stretch fabric that you're supposed to be using. What I'm going to do is before I measure this and readjust the size, I'm going to close the darts on both the front and the back. We don't need them. My fabric stretches two ways. It's a two-way stretch, so I'm going to have the stretch running horizontally so that it'll fit nice and snug around the chest and the waist area. So I do not need darts for that. And then we have three skirt pieces. We have, let's see, a skirt front, a skirt side front, and a skirt back. So what one thing that we need to keep in mind is that these skirt pieces, let me show you the waist, are huge. So, and we are going to be gathering them. Now I am using a sequence fabric. I don't want to gather a ton of sequence into the waist. It's gonna create a lot of bulk. So I'm going to have to remove the sequence that does get ga gathered around the waist. And when I make this smaller, whatever I take away from here, if I end up taking two inches, from the size of this bodice. I need to take that same amount away from the skirt pieces and I can kind of split it up. 
so that we still have sort of the same amount of gathering going on. So I'm going to take my daughter's measurements and I'm just going to measure her chest and her waist, maybe her hips. I'm also going to measure from her shoulder down to her waist and see if the measurement is similar to the height of this pattern piece. It probably won't be because this is a seven and she is uh, almost six. So I'm going to have to take a lot of measurements, compare them to the paper pattern and um, try and match them up and then take out whatever percentage of stretch the fabric has. So it's going to be a bit of a guessing game. The best option is to um, make the garment a little bit bigger because you can always take away if you make it too small you know, you're going to have to recut. So that is the goal here is to just make sure I get either very close to her measurements or a wee bit lower so that it stretches to fit her. And if it's too big, I can always take out more on, on the, of the seam allowance. Another thing that we're going to change on the bodice is the neckline. So right now, the neckline that this one has is a V-neck and we want to give it more of a curve like that. So I think what we're going to have to do is drop the center point of the neckline. So the midpoint, this is center front right here and drop it a little, well, drop it a little lower and then curve up just a bit. And then we're going to have a smaller shoulder seam and whatever we do here, we can, we're going to have to match up our seams. So let's say I did a curve and I ended right here. So all this is gone. I am going to have to then match this up and blend into here if I don't want to change the back. Now here again is the center back. I'm going to also have to keep in mind that there is usually, going, there for this pattern, there's supposed to be a zipper there. We will have no zipper. This is going to be one piece. So another very important measurement that I should make is not only the circumference, like I did say earlier, <clears throat> but where her spine is, I need to mark the side seam to her spine and then also just measure her, her back completely. So let's just pretend like this is a back. So I would measure from the side seam to the side seam on her back. I would measure from the side seam to the side seam on her front. And then I would measure the entire circumference. And that would be at the waist and at the chest. I don't think this, this doesn't drop low enough for the hips. So I'm not gonna need to worry about the hips. And then, like I said earlier, just measuring from the shoulder seam down to the waistline so that I can make sure this is compatible with her, her length as well. After measuring the little wiggle worm and holding these patterns up to her, I have decided that I'm going to take a half inch from the center front and a half inch from the side seam on the front bodice piece. I'm also going to take a half inch from the center back and the side seam here. Now that will equal to a whole inch being taken off because if I take half an inch off here, on the center back and I'm going to cut it on the fold. <clears throat> it's essentially taking an inch off because it's folded over. So half an inch and half an inch on one side when you open it up, we have taken an inch off. The same goes for the um, side seams under the armpit as well. So that is the first modification that I'm doing, half inch from um, both sides. The second thing that I'm going to be doing differently is this has a five eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to use a one inch seam allowance. That's going to get me down pretty close to my daughter's measurements for this. Because it is a stretch fabric, it may still be too big, which is a good thing. I can take it in if I need to, but that's what I'm going to be doing to the bodice. The skirt 
I am going to take out a little bit from the top of the skirt and then just, let me show you guys. So I'm gonna take a bit off of the skirt so that I'm not trying to fit so much extra into this waist that is now going to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to take out the same amounts. And so if I'm gonna take off and I'll split it up, I have three pieces of skirt and I'm gonna split, split it up on each of the seams sort of evenly. So it may end up being half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, or something like that. I'll figure out the math. But <clears throat> if I'm going to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's say half an inch from here, so there's my half inch mark. And then I'm going to turn, let me move this a little bit further so you guys can see. I'm gonna have my half inch mark right here. And then I'm just going to pull out my ruler so that it blends into the seam line right here. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna take it out so that it's just really taken out from the waist and we still have that nice big volume of the skirt. Another thing that I did I kept my skirt length. So this is where I should have cut for the um, age seven of the pattern, but I left all of the length that was there because I may be adding a hoop skirt under this. And if I do, the volume of the hoop skirt is going to require more length. I went through and I sewed the bodice and the lining together at the shoulder seams and the side seams. And now I have the lining slid in to the main fabric, right sides together. And I'm going to sew around the neck hole. Now I did just do an inch seam allowance and did a test fit on her and it's looking good. So we're going to leave it at this and sew the neck hole together. We have to get our skirt piece that is somewhat gathered to fit around our bodice. And there are a couple ways you could do it. You could measure the area around the bodice and then get this measured to match it and then pin them together. I've gotten this mostly gathered, so I'm just gonna place it onto the bodice and just try and get it evenly spaced out that way and then I will sew it together. I am only sewing this main fabric to the main fabric of the bodice so that when right sides are sewed together and it's on the inside, this um, seam will be up on the inside of the garment but then we will encase it in the lining so it won't rub on her or bother. Now that I've got the skirt sewn to the bodice, I'm actually gonna go around, um, I'm gonna flip it back inside out and stitch it one more time just to have a nice secure stitch because this is pretty heavy. Um, then I'm gonna 
going to remove my gathering stitch, of course, so we can't see that. And I'm going to press my seams open so it has a nice clean look. From here, we need to fit it on her because this skirt is definitely too long. I wanna see how it lays on her just like this. I do not expect it to look good or for her to like it. I think she's gonna want a little bit of flare, which will mean that I would need to make a petticoat. I do have a hoop skirt, but the hoop skirt is way too full. So we'll get this cleaned up, cut up. Um, I'm not going to close this seam. Actually, I probably will close this seam um, now and get it nice and closed in there. I still need to do the sleeves, but this can be closed up already once I get these um, seams nice and secure. For the petticoat that's going to go underneath this dress, I am using this striped organza that's partially sheer. I just had it and I'm never going to use it for anything and I think I have enough to make it work for the petticoat. I need approximately three yards. I measured her waist and the height of the petticoat that I want it to be and then broke it up into tiers. So a top tier, a mid tier, and a bottom tier. This is how tall or wide it's going to be. And then this is the length, how long it's going to be. So I'm going to do two at this, uh, three for the mid tier at those measurements, and then five for the bottom tier at these measurements here. And I'm gonna be using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm not going to be putting any um, lace or trim or anything on the bottom tier. I'm just going to be hemming it. Once you have all your pieces cut out for your petticoat, you need to connect each section so that it's one continuous loop. So this is about uh, four different pieces. This one is three or three or four, and this one is two. I want to connect those pieces by sewing the ends right sides together so I have one very long loop. After I do that, for the bottom tier, I am going to do a stitch along the top so that I can gather it. And probably before I do that, I'm going to hem the bottom since I'm not going to be adding any trim to the bottom. And then when this is stitched, I'm going to gather it and match it to the bottom of this one. And then I will sew this to the bottom of this. And then from there, I will gather the top of the second tier. And I will make the second tier gathered to the point that it fits the bottom of the top tier. And then I will stitch this to this, and then I will gather the top tier. So we're kind of working from the bottom up. It is a pain because these are very long. This one, the bottom one is, let's see, 7, 14, 21, 28, 350 inches. <laughs> This bottom one is 350 inches. And we have to fit it onto the bottom of this one, which ungathered would be 174 inches. So it is a lot of gathering, a lot of pinning, a lot of sewing, a lot of annoyance. I do not like making petticoats. It's easier to buy one, but it is, it is easy to make. It's just time consuming because there's a lot of gathering and all that stuff. But So this is my second tier right here. And my edges have been, my ends have been sewn together. So it is one continuous loop when we open it up. So I have to now fit tier three, my bottom tier, which has already been hemmed. Um, I uh, surged the ends and just folded it over. It's so much easier um, than pressing. Um, so it's already been hemmed and I've also done my stitch at the top. So now I have to gather all of this and fit it onto that. And I will pin it together and then I will sew it.
Okay, so now we have our bottom tier connected to our mid tier, and I just did a stitch here. So I'm going to gather the middle tier to attach it to the top tier that has only been connected at each end, so it's one tube. So we're just going to repeat the process, gather, connect, and stitch it onto the top tier. Okay, so now that all three tiers are connected, top, middle, and bottom, I am going to go ahead and serge the top of this top tier here, and then I'm gonna fold it over an inch and I am going to top stitch it, and I'm gonna leave about an inch space so that I can um, put elastic through it, and that's going to become my waistband. Okay, my lady. No. You want to say hello for all the difficulties? Hi. <laughs> bye. Uh, I just leave you. Okay, wait. I need to take the dress off. Okay, say bye. Bye. We have hemmed the bottom of the dress, so now we need to add the sleeves. I already have the gathering stitch placed at the top of my um, sleeve that's going to attach to the bodice. I need to connect, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to connect the underarm portion of my sleeve. So I'm going to sew this together. I did not make the sleeve any smaller um, because I, I think I already said this. I wanted it to be nice and poofy, um, but I'm going to go ahead and sew the underseam together and then I'm going to gather the top and we are going to fit it into the armhole of our bodice. We're going to fit it right into here. And then after that, I'm going to see if she likes it just with the puff sleeve. And um, if she does, I'll leave it. If she wants a long sleeve, which she should do because it does get quite cold here on Halloween. I'm going to use this fabric to drape it around her and make the rest of the sleeves. So Now, if she ends up just wanting the sleeve like this and having a short puff sleeve without anything attached to it, I am just going to add elastic in to the bottom of this so that it cuffs around her arm. Um, I'm going to leave it open for now until we get it on her and see what she thinks about it. Call me off. I bought you off. Okay. So do you like just the short sleeves? Now, it would stop right there. Wait, come over here so we can You're see. pinching me. Well, I'm pinching you so I can hold it. Oh. It would be like this, and you would just have a poof. Or we would do... More softer. More softer, right? A sleeve like that. That's a whole lot of... Put it a sleeve like hers. Oh. Okay, you want another sleeve? Yeah, I just... I, I agree with the sleeve, but but listen to what you have to do since you have a sleeve. You have to stand still so I can fit it onto you. Okay. You think you can handle that? Will you pay it back on me? <laughs> I would... Yes, I'm going to... But I'm going to use safety pins, so I'll close them. You'll be fine. I
Okay, so I can't really video the next part because my other machine, um, my foot pedal broke. So I'm going to have to be super close and hitting the start stop button to sew it because that is my machine where I can do a stretch stitch. So what I'm gonna do to connect those sleeves that I just fitted is I am going to run a gathering stitch on the end of this sleeve as well. I'm going to gather it to where um, the other sleeve is going, to, the width of the other sleeve and then attach it and then hem it. So um, super easy. I'll try to video it, but um, it may, you may not be able to see it very well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these sleeves have to go over your hands. They have to go over this part of your hand, which is obviously wider than your wrist. So when you're putting sleeves on, you have to either make sure you're using a stretch fabric that can stretch over your hand and onto your wrist. Or if you're doing a non-stretch fabric, you either make the wrist um, piece wide enough to go over the hand, or you have a slit cut open either right here or right here and you would have buttons to close. You kind of see those with um, wedding gowns and stuff like that. But remember that the arms have to get over the width of your hand as well. So I've got that marked and now I'm just going to stitch this second piece and then I will gather the bottoms, add it, and we will do another fit test. So we are almost done. All I need to do is get the overlay that you can see here, this overlay, and drape it onto the dress form. Um, instead of creating a pattern, I just thought it would be easier just to use the um, sheer fabric that I used for the sleeves to drape over the dress and try to accomplish the same look. I will likely not um, hem it and just leave it because it doesn't unravel or anything like that. And I will hand stitch it to the dress. I trimmed off the excess fabric from the bolt and then I put the dress form on a box so that I can get the overlay just a wee bit longer than the actual dress. Um, you would probably usually put this on your client and have them stand on, you know, not necessarily a box, but you know, something higher where it falls so that you can pin. But she is five and she's a wiggle worm. So we have it placed on here and all I'm gonna do is go around and just pin a little bit longer all the way around and I am going to, actually I'll probably switch to safety pins and I'll um, sew the skirt on first and then I will cut it. And then we will try and figure out what we're gonna do about the top because even if I fold it under, it's not going to look great. So we're gonna play around with some trims to see how we can kind of uh, make that look a little more finished. I am going to be using invisible thread to sew the overlay onto the dress. So I was able to stitch the overlay really, really close and get the edge right up on that seam. So I think it looks okay. Um, we might be done. I'm gonna have her put it on when she gets home from school. I still need to trim the overlay and if she likes it, then we're good. <laughs> we're done.